This is the new Mercedes CL65. It has a 6-litre twin-turbo V12 engine, 612 horsepower, and so many torques that Mercedes actually had to detune the engine to stop it blowing up the gearbox. Now, it does cost £120,000, but amazingly, it isn't the top banana Mercedes. No, rather annoyingly, I had to go to South Africa to drive that. So why do we have to come all the way here to Cape Town? It's a puzzler. After all, South Africa has the highest rate of carjacking in the world, so it's hardly the perfect place to drive a 300 grand supercar. No, it is a, a real struggle to see a single reason why senior Mercedes executives would want to spend a month here in November. Anyway, the car. It costs three times as much as the most expensive Mercedes. So it had better be at least three times as good. Let's have a look. Well, it's certainly got the presence, the charisma, that long bonnet, those grills in the wings. Crikey, it does look good. If there's one thing any supercar's got to do, it's make you feel like a 10-year-old as soon as you look at it. Mission accomplished, I think. And this shape, remind you of anything? Formula One car, and then there's this. The doors. How long until you tire of that? Well, you never will. But it's got one more trick. Starting it. Lift and press the button. Ooh. I've just come over all funny. And on the move, it loses none of that charisma. The McLaren connection means that whereas the Ferrari, for instance, is made in exotic sounding Obna, the SLR is made in Woking in Surrey. But don't let that put you off because the last car to be made in Woking was the McLaren F1. That's a hard act to follow, so McLaren has used plenty of its F1 know-how in making the SLR. Like an F1 car, it's made almost entirely of carbon fibre. And again, like an F1 car, it has a flat underbody for high-speed stability. There's even an electronic air brake that lifts up at the back. The thing is designed to stick to the ground and get its power down. So much grip, it will crease the road before it lets go, I'm sure. But even more impressive is the engine. They've used a five and a half liter supercharged V8. It puts out 626 brake horsepower and more torque than in all the rest of the cars in the world added together. Nought to 60, 3.8 seconds. Better still, nought to 120, just over 12 seconds. Top speed, well, limited by tires and stuff, to 207 miles an hour. That's probably enough. And what an engine. The laws of physics no longer apply. That thing all the way over there is actually here. Watch. It's got more power than God, it's loaded with F1 technology, and it grips and handles like no other. And if you stop anywhere for more than 10 seconds, you'd better enjoy being mobbed. Is it yours? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Wow. All that begs the vital question, have they done it? Is this the ultimate supercar? No. Let me explain. If I spent £313,000 on a house, I want it to look pretty nice inside. On a car, I want it to blow my mind. 
This just doesn't. There's plastic in here. Come on. This is a car to be bought by people who don't have plastic stuff knocking about. Their lives are perfect, shining, without flaw. And it has a very, very firm ride, unless you adjust it, in which case it gets even harder. But there's one other reason why I'm sad to say it fails to be perfect, and it's these, the brakes. I mean, look! Whoa! It sure isn't that they don't stop. They do. But it's how they do it. The brakes are on or off, and that's your choices. It's not like they're unsophisticated. They're ceramic and virtually fade-free, no matter how much punishment they get. On wet surfaces, the discs are constantly massaged by the brake pads to keep them dry. I mean, short of deploying parachutes, you couldn't do any more to stop this car than it already does. But it has no feel. I feel remote and distant, and that comes close to ruining the whole experience. It falls short, then, of perfect, and perfection is what we're after here. And I'm not sure the SLR really knows what it is. It wants to be a race car, like a Carrera GT, or an Enzo, but it also wants to be a comfy GT Cruiser. So at times it feels not like a special hypercar, but just a big, fast Merc. And then they tell you, proudly, that there's enough room in the boot for two sets of golf clubs. And that worries me. That's just fat businessman stuff. It's a marriage between McLaren and Mercedes, the SLR. And it's brilliant. I just wish it was a bit more McLaren and a bit less Mercedes. Big question is, OK, how does it compare to the Porsche Carrera GT? Don't know. I haven't driven it. Now, that's the thing, you see. Yes. I have driven the Porsche Carrera <laughs> GT. There's a photograph of me here in it. There I am, look, going through a wood. Oh, yes. And uh, there's another one of me inside e it there. You look like you're having fun. This leaves us with this bit of a problem, because you've driven one, I've driven the other. We need to kind of combine our experiences to really come up with a meaningful conclusion. We need a, a mind meld, really. No, that hurts. It's not that's working, no. is it? I'll tell you what we'll do, because we're ingenious. Top gear, top trumps. Here's okay. a decider. <laughs> this is the decider. <laughs> OK, what sort of brake horsepower have you got uh, in the SLR? 626 brake horsepower. Well, you beat the Porsche. Yeah, That's a mere 612. Mm -hmm. OK, what about your weight? Ah, well, this is where it goes wrong. 1,693 kilos. Porsches are lightweight, 1,380. Okay. So, I've got less power, I've got less weight. Not to 60? 3.8. 3.8. <sighs> <sighs> OK, price. £313,465. A bargain, frankly. Oh, obviously. <laughs> Compared to the Porsche's £322,899. There is just one thing, though, we really can split them. Things that are wrong with it, the flaws on this. Uh, well, there is that plasticky interior, it's a bit disappointing, and the brakes are desperately numb, and the ride is a bit hard, mm. it must be said. What mm. about flaws on the Carrera GT that you drove? Aren't any. Right. Honestly, there was nothing wrong with it, apart from the people who make it. No, no, get out! <laughs> oh, no. You can look at it gently. They have made a perfect car, and annoyingly, they have made a perfect car. It is absolutely brilliant. So yeah. we would have to say, well, I suppose actually, for going, if you're, you're going Big to the buddy. golf pitch, yeah, you can get your bats in the back. Yeah, you can get your right bats up. in the back. So you need one of these. But if you're like a human, and yes. you just want to drive on roads or on motorways or tracks, you're better off with the Porsche. Uh, right uh, now. We